Assalamualaikum and very good morning to all of you. Okay, I think uh, uh, Umu okay, has uh, introduced me. Okay, uh, I'm Dr. Ihami. Uh, you can ask me, okay, your facilitator today. All right. Um, well, um, um, okay, I'm going to facilitate you, okay, on uh, effective leadership styles and values in higher education. Okay, um, I believe that all of you are leaders or have been uh, selected as leaders before or maybe uh, you have no experience uh, being a leader whatsoever. Okay, but uh, this talk okay, will highlight you okay, on some effective leadership styles and values that you may use in your work. Okay. Why? Okay, because okay, leaders are not made. Okay, leaders are made. Okay, and not born. And through training and experiences, okay, inshallah, you'll be a good and better leader. And of course, okay, effective leaders at the end of the day. So, what is leadership? Okay, leadership is a complex word. However, it's uh, universal. It means authority, command, power, control, influence, supervision, guidance, direction, jurisdiction, management or administration. However, it could mean different thing to different people. But in our context today, it's higher education. So basically, leadership is uh, the capability of doing something to somebody. It's the art of motivating a group of people towards achieving a common goal. It's a process of influencing the activities of an organized group towards goal setting and accomplishments and leadership is a process by which a leader can direct, guide and influence the behavior and work of others towards accomplishment of specific goals in a given situation. Thus, a leader is actually an interpersonal process uh, to which one person is able to influence the activities of individuals or groups towards the entertainment of given objectives within a particular situation by means of communication. And the leadership is continuous and it is also a dynamic process. Uh, what is a leader? Okay, a leader is a person who influences a group of people towards the achievement of a goal. A person who directs and controls a group of people to achieve a set of purposes. Someone who influences staff to creatively contribute to organizational success and to take responsibility for his or her action. And to do so, it's not easy. I think, okay, some of you who have been leader, you have experienced this. Okay, it's not easy to influence people. It's not easy to motivate people. Okay, so uh, you need uh, some certain of skill, okay, some certain of uh, criteria, some certain of uh, qualities, some certain of uh, characteristics, and also okay, you need to have some certain of leadership style, okay, which we are going to uh, discuss today. 
uh, and also we are going to learn today. Uh, and other than that is the values. What are the leadership values okay, that you need to have okay, in order to be effective? And I, as I said, okay, uh, we can learn okay, to be a leader. We are not born to okay, be a leader. And we can be trained okay, to be a leader. And leadership skills okay, can be developed okay, through process. And training okay, that like what we have today. So now, okay, uh, comes to uh, exercise one, okay. I want you to name a leader in higher education that you idolize and why. So think a leader okay, in higher education that you idolize and give the reasons why okay, you like him or her so much. Right, so this is our first exercise. So actually, okay, we have uh, five exercise all together. So I hope that we have enough time okay, to do all the exercises. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, so we have uh, about 10 minutes. So we can And uh, I'll come back to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, our time is up. All right, uh, who wants to volunteer uh, to do this exercise? Uh, name a leader in higher education that you idolize and give the reasons of okay, why you like him okay, or her so much. Okay, okay, okay uh, he or she, okay, um, so I don't. Yeah, uh, uh, you can unmute your mic to answer if you want. Okay. So the participant okay, can uh, unmute eh, your mic and speak up. Yeah, um, perhaps okay, we can start with uh, Dr. Safia. Dr. Safia is our fellow. Uh, okay, uh, I'm not sure if she's listening or not. Okay, uh, Prof. Uh, Jaria, is, is he here from Jaria? Okay, uh, Dr. Simin uh, Gafika. Yeah, I'm here. Ah, okay. Jaria here. Okay. <laughs> ah. um, okay, what's the start first? Okay. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay. Oh. All right, uh, Dr. Simin. Okay. Okay. Salam alaikum, everybody. Good morning. Uh, good question. Actually, for me, they're in higher education. They should have a quite clear vision because vision helps them to forecast the uh, future of their organization, which is really important. And through this vision and mission, they should plan properly and organize and arrange the um, further strategies and policies. So having uh, intellectual curiosity is really important for the leader, specifically in higher education, um, especially in higher education in 21st century. So it's really important. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. Uh, um, Dr. Simon, are you from Malaysia? Yes, I'm uh, in Faculty of Education. I mean, are you, are you Malaysia? <laughs> is it important now? Yeah, yeah, no, it's not important because we're asking about, yes, I keep no. asking about example. Like, can give me an example yeah. about a leader in Actually, higher education. Actually, I'm living in Malaysia more than 20 years. Uh, so I consider okay. myself Malaysian. Uh, okay. So maybe, uh, okay, okay, right. I think I asked somebody else, if you don't okay. know what to share, okay, uh, your okay. idol uh, in uh, higher education. Okay, uh, let's try... Um, Shahizam Hassan? Shahizam Mama Hassan? Uh, Nasrul Hakim Jamaluddin? Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Just now, okay, Datin uh, wants to say something, Datin. Uh, Datin Jaria? Nasrul Supervisor, Datin uh, Jaria. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, Doctor Ilhami, I'm not a Datin. <laughs> I'm just Jari. <laughs> Yeah, um, I agree with Dr. Uh, Prof. Simin uh, with regards to a leader having mission and vision because I think that's important. Uh, plus, I think a leader should also have some uh, plans, like strategic plans in order to put in place in order to achieve uh, the mission and vision. So in terms of a leader in higher education, uh, over the years there are so many because I think uh, one, one thing for sure, UM produces leaders, yeah? Uh, because it's the oldest university and, and the university has actually produced so many, so many uh, leaders. But as far as higher education is concerned, one that strikes uh, me the most is actually our, uh, our, one of our uh, VCs, Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Uh, Dr. Anwar Zaini. I'm not sure whether you, you remember him. Uh, yeah, 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 I remember him. Yeah, so... For his uh, word of Sahaba, eh? Sahaba. Yes. Yeah, I, I thought that was, you, you know, uh, a unique idea and uh, the objective in itself is important, you know, because uh, it's a breakthrough, uh, particularly as, uh, you, as far as UM staff is concerned, because he creates this notion of oneness, yeah, through uh, various uh, strategic uh, um, plans that he has. One of it is like what you mentioned, Sahabat, yeah. Um, I remember being um, roped in, into uh, the one of the activities, which is which is Ali Sunka. I'm not sure whether you remember that. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I didn't go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I heard lots of gory stories, but then when I attended it, I kind of enjoyed it because that gives me an opportunity to actually get to know, you know, our staff from uh, other other uh, faculties. And, and that is important, I thought, uh, yeah. Um, but uh, in essence, I think the leadership style um, has a lot to do with uh, the success of uh, a particular leader, yeah, how he or she is able to drive the organization in which he or she leads. Um, so when you ask me about uh, a leader in higher education whom I idolize, uh, he came to my mind immediately because of his different style of leadership. And uh, he also, he was also accountable for us going uh, forward with our ISO, isn't it? Ah, yeah. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Right. And, and we are the only university in the whole world in, in uh -huh. which the entire campus is actually, uh, you know, compliant yeah, uh, to the ISO. And I thought that's a great achievement. It's not easy, but he managed to do it. And we got our accreditation. So that's all from me. Okay, okay. thank you so much. Uh, this right. is a person, Dr. Jaria. Okay, uh, that's right. Okay. Um, apa tu? Um, Datuk Professor Dr. Anwar Zaini okay, was uh, one of our VCs. Eh? Uh, so far, okay, we have uh, 10 VCs. Eh? So uh, our current lucky VC right now is uh, 11 lucky VC. So other than um, uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Anwar Zaini, okay, our past uh, VCs, okay, uh, uh, Datuk Dr. Abdul Rahim, okay, Hashim, okay, Tan Sri Prof. Dr. Muhammad Amin Jamaluddin, Tan Sri Gaw Desmond, Datuk Rafia uh, Salim, uh, Datuk Prof. Dr. Hashim Yaakob, uh, Datuk Dr. Haji Muhammad Tai Usman, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Syed Hussein Al-Atas, uh, that's it. Okay. Uh, and um, Tan, uh, Tan Sri Datuk Haji Abdul Wasan Husi. Alright. Uh, some, uh, two of them, I think, uh, some of them, okay, some of them already uh, asked for them. Okay. So, uh, what they have to them. Uh, so, um, okay, I hope that, um, okay, we have, we are warming up, okay, towards our next uh, topic. So, um, at least okay, uh, from this uh, exercise, okay, uh, you can link, okay, you can link, okay, the example uh, of uh, our BC, okay, with uh, the topic, okay, that we are going uh, to do today. Yeah. Okay, so we go to the next uh, topic, okay, about uh, effective leader. Okay, so this is uh, what we are waiting for uh, because everybody okay, wants to be an effective leader. 
so uh, because okay, being good or great leader, it does not mean that you achieve the goals uh, that you have set, set earlier. Okay, thus okay, you need to make sure that you are effective. Okay, because uh, effective leader is associated with high performance. Uh. So high performance, okay, is the objective. Okay, is the target. Okay, of our uh, workforce. Okay, uh, our daily life. Uh, so. Uh, as a leader, okay, you have to make sure that okay, your workforce, okay, your employees, okay, uh, as a team, okay, they have maximum uh, level of uh, effort, okay, to ensure that okay, the objectives are uh, achieved. Eh? So, what do we mean by effective leader? Okay, yeah, effective leader is someone who knows how to inspire and relate to subordinates, eh? know how to increase the employees' motivation and to make employees loyal to the organization. And these effective leaders, okay, they possess a certain criteria. So in order to be effective, okay, you need to have certain criteria, certain qualities, uh, certain characteristics. Uh, so from uh, past studies, okay, I have identified, okay, some of uh, uh, these criteria, okay, are intelligent, okay, um, fair-minded, uh, broad-minded, uh, sportive, dependable, Operative, determined, imaginative, ambitious, courageous, caring, mature, and uh, self-control. Okay, what do you mean by uh, intelligent? So, effectively, a leader is intelligent, okay? Uh, who is intelligent enough to examine problems and difficult situations. They are analytical, okay, who ways. Uh, pros and cons, and then summarize the situation. And uh, the excellent leader okay, can look at an issue and see it from several different angles. Whereas a fair minded leader analyzes uh, both sides of an issue and develops a resolution that is viewed by others as one. While a broad minded leader has a wide view of the position. And he or she okay, has the ability to process situations with the big picture in mind. And when you need to make a decision and leader, people expect you to have the bigger picture in mind. As a leader, you need to be open to new ideas and suggestions from employees. Next criteria of an effective leader is supporting. Supporting leadership is a leadership style in which the leader supports their subordinates with tools and resources until they have the skills to work autonomously. Supportive leaders do their best to ensure everyone on their team has the necessary skills, tools and resources to complete the tasks they have been assigned and find success in a long-term project. While dependable leaders is an effective leader that has the ability to be counted on to meet commitments and deadlines. Consistently follow through on the commitments that you make to others and honor agreed upon timelines. While cooperative leader is a leader who share freely their information and who can work with people to get things done and to get results quickly. Able to hear fully what others are saying. Able to hear critical feedback accurately and with minimal reactivity or defensiveness. Able to respond with openness and curiosity when people disagree. Able to appreciate the contribution of others. Good at reaching divergent viewpoints. And they portray themselves with honesty and integrity and have the confidence to share their feelings and to protect the feelings of others. So cooperative leadership is not about working together in harmony. It's about finding the best path to a solution. This is achieved when people have a say in what happens. So the bottom line is that cooperation is a criteria okay, for a leader to be effective in order to gain influence 
and for the groups to be successful. And the next uh, criteria of effective leader is determined. Determined means we have uh, drive, persistence, initiative, and dominance. Effective leaders who are determined push boundaries okay, when they are faced with obstacle and they have the capacity to persevere through them. Imaginative leader explore angles and avenues that fears are scared of. They go out of way to try new experiences, learn new things, and practice implicitly by continually asking further questions. They also like to think of new initiative and projects that would give competitive advantage and help students become more productive. And they venture into new ways of thinking, new trends and technology, new methodology, and as well. While ambitious, uh, ambitious leaders they regularly express ambition to go above and beyond what is asked and who show genuine interest in their organization's future. And courageous leaders have the strength to, to speak up again okay, what is best for the organization despite fear or failure. Willing to take risks in the achievement of organizational goals with no assurance of success. Caring leader maintains eye contact during conversation, ask many questions and listen more than they ask, and they desire the feedback and opinion of those they need. Regularly compliment people in public and private setting, and they express genuine interest in the lives of those they need. Virtual leaders are uh, uh, strong, they stand strong, even when faced with uh, flattery, uh, they are willing to take uh, criticism into account without feeling shaken or undermined. While a uh, self-control leader, and finally self-control leader, is uh, the ability to manage response to any situation, is the ability to be confronted confronted okay, with a situation, how, however stressful, dire, or even infuriating, and choose not to respond with anger or frustration, but rather with an even temper, kindness, and compassion. And uh, it is also the ability to control feelings and overcome weaknesses eh, such as negative thoughts, fear, speech, and bad habits. So all in all, effective leader can make all the difference in their lives. And of course, okay, effective leader can okay, use the right leadership style. So uh, this is what we are going to discuss next. I think that everybody knows that uh, leadership is important, right? Because if you have that style of leadership, you may not be able to influence your staff well. And uh, they will not pass you and will not do what you have expected them to do. They also will not like you, and this will result in dissatisfaction. When this happens, okay, it's hard to make sure that they deliver their work well and exert their efforts to the maximum level. So we know that now that leadership is important because it's determined okay, the success or failure of an organization, and it will result in employee satisfaction Okay, especially when the leader is effective and use the right leadership style. And uh, these satisfied employees okay, will produce quality and good work and um, there will be an uh, increase of productivity and finally there will, there will be low exemptism okay, whenever uh, the employees are uh, satisfied. So what are the rules of leaderships? So from Minsberg, um, uh, 
these are some of the leaders rule as a leader okay you may perform okay all of these uh, rules or you may perform some of this role the first one is figure head okay figure head means that you perform social and legal duties for example meeting visitors uh, sign documents attending ribbon cutting ceremonies officiating uh, seminar or conferences or you can be a spokesperson uh, who passes a memo report eh? informational material participates in meetings and report work progress or communicate the rational organization to public or functions as a negotiator who defends uh, the organization interests and participate in direct or indirect uh, negotiation uh, you are a coach and motivator at the same time okay where you have to recognize team member achievement provides feedback and guidance to team members ensure that team members are informed of ways to improve their performance reward and punish to motivate good performance a team builder whoever okay you need to recognize the members for accomplishment through letter of appreciation initiate activities that contribute to group moral and all periodic staff meetings to talk about staff accomplishment problems and concern and also okay as a leader you need to be a team player whereby okay you have to display appropriate personal contact with other unit display loyalty to superiors by supporting plans and decision and uh, you are also a technical problem solver okay. so it means that you cannot just be a cozy uh, leader okay you as a leader okay you need, you need to solve problems uh, you need to perform individual tests okay such as uh, uh, repairing uh, machinery and uh, you also are an entrepreneur okay whereby okay, you need to read uh, trade publication and professional journals okay to keep up okay what's happening in the industry and profession and uh, uh, at the same time okay you're also a strategic planner okay where you have to set a vision and direction of the organization and provide innovative ideas to pursue, deal with external environment and develop uh, policies. Finally, okay, you are an executor, okay, whereby okay, you have to make sure that work is productive and accomplished and you need to develop action plan and hold people accountable. Okay, so what are the principles of uh, leadership? Okay. Um, leadership principles are a framework of actions okay, you can take as a leader to inspire others to work together towards a common goal and okay, they are foundation for success. So what is the first one that you need to do as a leader? The first one is we have to plan. Uh, there is okay you need to assign job duties to the subordinates in accordance to their skills and abilities okay for example teaching also so, so it's, this is a uh, normal okay for head of department okay uh, he or she okay has to ensure that uh, the teaching load okay, is uh, fair to everybody okay in the department okay and secondly organize okay you need to keep the subordinates informed of the delivery dates okay for example for the uh, uh, exam papers, okay, when uh, the exam papers okay, should be ready, okay, and when okay, the exam marks okay, should be entered into Maya, okay, and so on. Okay. And uh, thirdly, okay, direct. Uh, there is to develop a sense of responsibility, okay, among the subordinates. Okay. You need to keep reminding, okay, your staff of their KPI, for example, okay, uh, part two and part three that we have completed before. Okay. Uh, finally, this monitor or control, okay, that is you have to ensure that tasks and job duties are 
accomplish on time, okay? And you have so many means, okay, to do this, okay, either by emailing or WhatsApp, okay? And others. All right. Uh, as a leader, okay, you have certain powers. There are some powers that you can use as a leader or uh, people say that you have the authority. Okay. So what kind of power that you have? Uh? So altogether, there are four uh, formal power okay, that you have okay, as a leader. The first one is cohesive. Yeah? Cohesive, okay, power means that you can punish okay, your subordinates yeah, for not doing okay, your work. Yeah? Uh, for not doing uh, work right, okay. Uh, for example, like uh, scolding, okay, you can scold, okay, your uh, subordinates. Yeah? And uh, the worst is, okay, um, for example, like uh, demotion, automation, or promotional delay. And secondly, okay, type of power, formal power, okay, that you have as, lead, as a leader is reward. Yeah? Uh, you can reward your subordinates uh, financially or financially, non financially. Yeah? Financially, okay, uh, for example, okay, you can. Uh, uh, give okay pay uh, raises okay pay agreement uh, and not financially for example okay you can recognize uh, your subordinate okay, for a job well done uh, or you can give him or her uh, you can give your staff okay, the opportunity to participate in uh, important projects and also growing trust also is considered as a uh, non-financial um uh, growing trust in relationship okay between the colleagues and also superiors is also considered as a uh, non-financial and thirdly, legitimate. Okay, legitimate is the combination okay, of uh, cohesive and reward power. And uh, normally, okay, uh, our uh, subordinate okay recognize uh, that uh, we have okay the legitimate power. Okay, as the leader, okay, they uh, say that okay we have the legitimate power whereby uh, uh, they are obliged okay to follow our instruction. And uh, we as the leader, we have the right people to strike them. Yeah? And finally, um, formal power that we have is information, okay? Uh, whereby, okay, as a leader, we have the information or we have the access to the key information. Uh, so, meaning that, okay, uh, we are the, um, um, we, we, we can control, okay, we can control who can get access okay, to the information. So, uh, in that case, okay, we are said uh, to be uh, the gatekeeper of the information. Okay, um, okay, so next, okay, what do you mean by effective leadership? Okay, effective leadership is the extent to which a leader constantly and progressively leads and directs his or her followers towards organizational performance. So it means that, okay, we have a leader, okay, in order to be effective, okay, we have to uh, um, continuously yeah, uh, motivate, uh, influence, uh, give guidance, uh, and give directions, okay, to our followers in order to achieve the objective of our organization. And, um, uh, we are not said to be effective if we do not give okay, the right tools okay, uh, for the staff okay, uh, to achieve and meet their goals. Yeah. Uh, so as a leader, okay, again, going back to the criteria of effective leader, okay, we need to be caring, yeah. we need to be cooperative yeah, uh, to help uh, your staff yeah, achieving their goals. Yeah. And um, effective leadership okay, is the extent of using the right leadership style, okay, which is we are going to discuss in our next slide. All right, but before we uh, discuss about the types of uh, leadership uh, style, okay, then we, we can see as effective uh, that we can use in higher education, okay, we need to know okay, what we mean by Leadership style. Uh, leadership style, okay, is the approaches, okay, that we can use to motivate our followers. Eh? All right. Um, so we come back, okay, uh, the definition, okay, of uh, effective leaders and effective leadership. That okay, we need to motivate our followers. 
And by uh, by doing this, okay, we can use okay, the formal power okay, that we have. Right? Uh, that is uh, by uh, giving them um, financial and also non-financial rewards. The leadership side is also the way in which the leader influences the followers. It's the role in shaping the behavior and attitude of organization members. An operation shape that someone uses his rights and methods to make people work together for a common task. And uh, it's a combination of traits, skills, and behavior that leaders use when interacting with their subordinates. Okay? So, uh, going back okay, to the definition of effective leader, okay? Um, um, you know that, okay? In order to be effective, okay, we have, we need to have, okay, uh, those effective uh, uh, qualities, uh, criteria, and characteristics. And um, and um, uh, not forgetting, okay, the skills, okay, uh, that uh, we have to use when we direct, okay, our um, employees, uh, our followers uh, in doing their tasks. Uh, uh, so the skills that we can uh, uh, use, okay, uh, some of the best skills, okay, that we can use, uh, uh, like uh, communication skills, uh, listening skills, uh, uh, and others. And uh, the type of behavior that you can use in interacting with your subordinates, uh, such that I uh, um, already okay, mentioned okay, in our uh, previous slides, uh, uh, that uh, you need to uh, inspire, okay, you need to influence them, okay, you need to direct them, okay, you need to motivate okay, your subordinates. So that is a leadership style. So some leaders, okay, they are prone okay, to use uh, only one gender style eh, in almost um, all situations. Eh? Um, other leaders, okay, they vary okay, their types of uh, leadership uh, style. Uh, so um, uh, in this uh, case, okay, you need to evaluate eh, uh, your uh, leadership, leadership style. Okay, you have to ensure okay which leadership, leadership style okay is the most effective, right? Because um, the one okay that is the most effective okay you need to continue okay you need to continue uh, using okay that kind of uh, leadership style uh, in order to increase uh, uh, your employees' uh, performance and at at the end of the day okay uh, your organization of performance okay will be achieved. Okay, but before that, okay, before we discuss about the effective, okay, the style, uh, the effective leadership style, okay, the types of effective leadership style, we need to know, okay, why uh, effective leadership style is important. Okay. All right, I want you to think, okay, what will happen okay, if leaders are effective? All right, okay, so the most obvious reason is because uh, organization and goals, they will not be achieved, eh? That's the most simple reason and the most obvious reason. Uh, all right. Uh, why? Okay, we need effective leadership. So effective leadership okay, is very important, especially for this time. Uh, you need to have the right style uh, to lead okay your employees because okay we need to motivate them. Uh, uh, as I said earlier, okay, it's not easy okay, to motivate your employees. Uh, your employees okay, come from all sorts of background. Uh, and um, okay, they are not like you, okay. Um, if you are you if you are more dedicated, okay, you are caring, okay, maybe okay, they are the opposite. And um, it's going to be a challenge for you, okay, to lead okay, a diverse group of employees okay, who comes from all sorts of background and uh, effective leadership style is important also is because to increase self-interest of employees okay, as well as organizational promises and the bottom line is of course okay, to achieve the organizational goals okay now we come to the second exercise okay uh, can you name some examples of ineffective leaders and their styles of leadership? 
And second one, can you name some examples of effective leaders and their styles of leadership? So I give you uh, five minutes, okay, to think of uh, uh, the answers okay, to this question. Okay, thank you. And I'll come back to you for the answers. Okay, I'm back. All right. Uh, okay, so let's uh, hear from uh, uh, Shahiza Mama Hassan. Uh, Shahiza. Uh, Nasrul Hakim Jamaluddin. Uh, Nur uh, Sharina Nordin. Uh, okay, okay. Nasrul Hakim Jamaluddin. Yeah. Doctor. Yes. Doctor, uh, can I share my thoughts? Uh, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm Jason. Medicine, eh? uh, no, no, uh, Mr. Still, Mr. <laughs> uh, okay. Which faculty are you from? I'm from Faculty of Law. Uh, law. Okay, law. All right, all right. Sure. Okay, go on. My name is Magason. Uh, well, I don't have one particular um, role model or a, a person to name. Uh, of course, many are coming to my mind, but I'm just giving a, a scenario. Perhaps uh, it would uh, answer your questions in exercise two. Um, I'm a football fan. In a football match, it's a group sport, right? You have uh, each team will have 11 players. The role of the captain of the team is uh, very important and crucial. Uh, you see, in the field, uh, the captain is the one who manages the entire team, and he, a good leader, is the one who behaves as a coach and he takes full charge and control of the match, right? He shouts, screams at his players, and he shows his commitment. He shows his uh, dedication, directs the entire players on the field. That that would be an example or style of leadership uh, I could think of. And at the same time, he must be a person who keeps his, his head cool. If there's any fraction between players, misunderstanding or with the opposition players, you know, the captain is the one who would go and speak to the referee and things like that. So a role a style of leadership of a football captain is very crucial to carry the success of the entire team. And at the same time, some essential qualities uh, is uh, listening to others, the other team players, uh, to land his ears, to, um, to listen to the opinion and views of the uh, other team players, because uh, that's that's important you you can make the decision as a leader but it must be after listening to the opinion and views of others uh, that's the um, effective uh, leadership qualities as for inactive uh, leadership qualities i could think of uh, uh, leaders who are less motivated no vision and those who like to give excuses and blame others right fault finding and have this all-knowing attitude, you know, self-claim gurus. Uh, they, they don't listen to others and, and they think they, they know everything. So those are the ineff in ineffective uh, leadership uh, qualities one should not have. That's my thoughts. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Magnuson. Eh? Uh, yeah, that's right. Eh? Uh, okay, you mentioned all the uh, effective, eh? effective uh, qualities and uh, ineffective qualities, okay? Uh, so those are the examples uh, of uh, the qualities, uh, but not the leadership style. Okay, but we are going to discuss about uh, later. Okay, about the style. Uh. Uh, all right. Okay. So let's hear from uh, one more person. Uh, Susanna Arif Azizan. Just now I saw uh, Nor Sharina Nordin. Uh, no, okay. All right. If there are no answers, uh, then okay, uh, I go uh, to the next to the next slide. Okay. Uh, Doctor Jana. Yeah. Assalamualaikum. Okay, Visha. Uh, yeah. Okay, Visha. Okay. From education, yeah. All right. So, 
um, when I saw ineffective and effective, I was thinking of leaders, I mean, great leaders that we know, right? So yeah, yeah. again, when we say ineffective, maybe we think ineffective, but on the other side, kan, there's always two parts to a coin, kan? Uh -huh. for, for example, we look at, say, Hitler. Hitler was a very autocratic style of leading, kan? Mao Zedong. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. But for, for their nation, maybe some of their people who, who benefited from that, they will think that he's effective. Uh, we take Gandhi, for example. Gandhi always went without uh, kekerasan, right? So yeah. for many of their people, they think it's right. But there were certain things that he did in the nation that, you know, orang bunuh dia and all that. So they might think that it's not right. And until today, you can see like Punjab and Pakistan, they are still fighting because of that bothering. So sometimes when we say effective, ineffective, their styles might bring benefit to some and not to some. So that is again ethical, we have this thing called egoism and utilitarianism. You know, you bring the biggest happiness to the biggest crowd, but there'll be a minority who suffer from that. So that's my explanation. Lah. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you, Misha. Okay, you uh, you mentioned about okay, some of the styles okay, that we are going to discuss uh, later. Okay, which are uh, more democratic. Uh. All right, okay, good, uh, Misha. So, I think okay, uh, most of you okay, have uh, the right uh, uh, idea, okay, what uh, we mean okay, by style of, okay, of leadership, uh, right? Okay. So, let's go on, okay. Uh, A big problem with my computer. That's what my computer, my, my computer got flat yesterday. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Types of uh, leadership, types of effective leadership style. Okay, so next, again, we are going to discuss about types of effective uh, leadership styles. Eh? So, what are the uh, styles eh, that uh, we can see as effective? Okay, so just now, okay, we just said that. Uh, to some people, okay, they say that it's effective, okay, but not to uh, some people. Huh? But uh, at the end of the day, okay, um, these okay, are the uh, types okay, of effective leadership styles. Huh? Okay, the first one is team leadership. Huh? In team leadership, so team leadership okay, is derived from uh, behavioral uh, theory. And uh, next is a life cycle and uh, Bakko theory, okay. So both of these, okay, are taken from contingency theory. And next is theory Z, charismatic, uh, transformational and ethical, okay. Which are taken from contemporary uh, uh, theory. Okay, so, uh, let's discuss the first um, type of uh, effective okay, leadership style, eh, which is uh, team uh, leadership. So team leaderships uh, okay, from a uh, leadership grade, eh, uh, uh, which was uh, developed by uh, Robert Blake and Jane Walton okay, in early 1960s. There are two pillars of uh, team leadership or uh, leadership grid uh, theory, uh, which is uh, firstly is concerned for people okay, in terms of their needs, interests, and areas of uh, personal development, and secondly is concerned for production okay, in terms of uh, uh, concrete objectives, uh, organizational efficiency, and high productivity. Okay, so the leaders okay, need to. Um, uh, take concern okay, for these uh, factors, uh, key factors, uh, people and 
structure. So for uh, team leadership uh, theory, okay, uh, both concerns okay are high. Okay, uh, is uh, for people and production. Okay, you know that okay. Um, leaders okay that uh, implement team leadership style. Um, they are very concerned of their people. Okay, uh, so there is a very high uh, employee involvement. Okay, and um, uh, there is a mutual and respect. And of course, okay, uh, this will eventually okay will produce to high production. Okay, and at the same time, okay, the team leadership. Uh, style okay it's also focusing on high production so okay this uh, two uh, emphasis okay um, on high people and high production okay will lead to high performance okay so this is according to team leadership uh, by robert Blake and jane Hopper. Okay, so this is the grid, okay, leadership grid, okay, so team um, leadership, okay, is uh, situated, okay, at the upper uh, right quadrant, okay, so you can see that, okay, uh, that would be, okay, is uh, sizing uh, on high people and high tasks, huh? right, uh, so this is uh, the most effective uh, leadership style. If you want to uh, produce um, uh, highly, okay, then okay, you need to um, implement. Okay, uh, you need to practice. Okay, this kind of uh, leadership style. Yeah? All right. Uh, but however, okay, if you uh, do the opposite way, then okay, uh, you're not going to get uh, high performance. Yeah? For example, okay, if uh, your concern on task is high, okay, but then uh, low on people, okay, then, okay, uh, uh, the name of your leadership, leadership site is produce or perish. I think uh, this is a uh, uh, similar, okay, that we have, okay, we uh, normally hear, okay, in our uh, work, uh, uh, as a lecturer, okay, we need to uh, publish or perish, <laughs> okay, so, uh, so we can say that, okay, this kind of uh, uh, task is, is actually, okay, it's actually, uh, Okay, the concern on task is, okay, is very high, and the concern on people is low. But then, okay, if okay, both are low, okay, then your side of uh, leadership is in overreach, in overreach. Okay, then uh, this is the most okay, effective uh, leadership style. Okay, whereby uh, uh, maybe okay, there is no uh, zero performance at all. Okay, uh, zero performance at all. Okay, since uh, you are not. Uh, Okay, you are not uh, strict on people and also you are not strict on the production. Okay, but okay, if you are too concerned, okay, you show too much concern for people, okay, but um, low on tasks, okay, then your start of leadership is more or less concrete club. Okay, concrete club. But then, okay, if you are moderate, okay, if you are moderate, okay, you are balancing, okay, both of the tasks and uh, people, okay, then uh, your leadership side is called as middle of the group, okay, then uh, the performance, okay, is going to be average. But that's not what we want, okay? So as a human being, uh, you know, and some more, okay, uh, surely, okay, our organization, okay, we want uh, us, okay, to perform, okay, to give the highest perform, uh, performance, uh, so uh, it means that, okay, we need to implement, okay, uh, the most effective leadership style, okay, which is team leadership. Okay, the next uh, theory is uh, life cycle leadership. Okay? Life cycle leadership. Uh, it is based on uh, Hershey and Blanket uh, situational theory. Whereby, okay, the leader has to match okay, the style okay, based on the level of followers' readiness. Okay. That is the extent to which followers have the ability and willingness to accomplish a specific task. Okay, what do you mean by ability? Okay, ability is the knowledge, experience, and skill that an individual possesses okay, to do the job, or in other words, it's known as 
job by the means. Okay, so it means that okay, if you have the knowledge, okay, if your schoolmates you have the knowledge, experience, skills, so uh, shows that okay, your employee is ready, okay, to do the job, and also your uh, your staff is able to do the job. And second is willingness. Okay, willingness is the motivation and commitment required to accomplish a given task. So these two are very important. Okay, ability and willingness okay, are very important uh, to accomplish uh, tasks. So if your subordinate okay, does not uh, either one of these uh, factors, then it's quite difficult okay, for you okay, to make sure that okay, they will uh, do, uh, they will complete okay, the task uh, given by you. So from this okay um, graph okay we can uh, see okay clearly okay uh, how uh, we can mesh okay we can mesh uh, the level of uh, the followers readiness uh, with uh, the task okay with the task and the relationship okay with the subordinates uh, and. Uh, uh, we also can determine, okay, the style, okay, of the leadership that we can use. Yeah? So, for example, okay, if, okay, the level of the followers is low, okay, then, okay, your follower is unable and unwilling. So, the right, okay, the right uh, leadership style, okay, that you can use is uh, telling. Okay? You need to tell, uh, okay. You need to tell uh, because okay uh, the task okay the task the concern on the task is high while okay the concern on the relationship is low okay but okay but uh, if okay the level of your employees is low to moderate okay then okay your staff okay are unable but willing okay then the best okay uh, leadership style that you can use is selling okay selling is uh, concerning on high tasks okay uh, and high relationship okay but then okay if the level of your employees the level of your employees readiness okay is moderate okay then your employees are able but unwilling okay then okay uh, your leadership style is participating okay where uh, the task is uh, the task is low uh, but then, okay, the relationship is high. And finally, okay, if, okay, the level of your followers readiness is high, so it shows that, okay, your employees, okay, are able and willing, then, okay, the best leadership sites delegating. Okay. So here, okay, the task, the focus on task is low and the focus on relationships is also low. Alright, okay, to see clearly, okay, this is the Another graph of uh, leadership cycle, okay, so you can see that it's like a curve, alright, a normal curve, okay, uh, so the next, okay, theory is the uh, particle theory, okay, which is go from uh, contingency theory. Uh, so according to uh, this theory, okay, uh, which is developed by Robert House, yeah, uh, based on aspect theory. Uh, here, okay, leaders is you as coaches or facilitators and uh, this theory anchors on the leader's ability to analyze the situation at hand and appropriately adopting a suitable approach which best suits the circumstances according to, firstly, subordinate. Eh? Subordinate uh, characteristic, okay, in terms of perceived ability, locus of control and experience. Eh? And uh, the second factor is the, uh, the environment factors, okay, in terms of task structure, formal authority system, and work group. Okay. And, um, okay, the result of matching, okay, the condition of your staff and the environment, okay, will result you, okay, in the uh, types of leadership style uh, that you're going to implement. And also, okay, whether uh, your leadership style okay, is uh, practical or not, okay, uh, in terms of satisfaction and uh, performance. All right, okay, so if your subordinate, okay, wants uh, authority leadership and they possess, okay, extra external, external locus of control and they have a low ability, 
whereas okay, the environment is complex or ambiguous, uh, and uh, you have a strong formal authority and the workbook, but uh, the workbook is good. Okay, then the leadership style is directed. Eh? Um, and, oh, oops. Okay, sorry for that. Uh, I did have to do that. Okay. Uh, okay. If your subordinate okay do not want authority leadership and they have internal locus of control, and at the same time okay they have high ability, and the tasks are simple or structured, and we have okay weak formal authority and the workbook is not, not, not quite good. Uh, I mean uh, in terms of group cohesion okay it is low, so the best okay leadership side is supportive. And next, okay, if the subordinate you want to be involved and they have internal locus of control and they have high ability, okay, then and uh, the task is ambiguous or complex and uh, the uh, formal authority is neither uh, strong or weak and the good group is either good or bad, then okay, the best leadership side is participating. And finally, okay, if the subordinate okay, wants authority leadership okay and they have external locus of control and high ability and the task is simple or structured and the formal authority is uh, strong but then okay uh, the group position okay is uh, either uh, high or low then okay the best okay leadership side is uh, shipment oriented okay and uh, in summary okay in summary okay directive okay uh, type of leadership, uh, style of leadership, okay, uh, is whereby, okay, the leader, okay, has to give instruction and they have to tell, okay, what is expected and how it is done. And they have to inform about the timeline, the standard set, rules and regulation, and also uh, rewards. And they have to use, okay, rewards and discipline, okay, to motivate, okay, we are employees. Eh? Uh, whereas, okay, supportive, uh, uh, style of leadership okay is friendly and approachable and they treat uh, followers as equals okay and uh, they practice respect make work pleasant and uh, uh, they practice uh, personal concern for needs welfare and well-being uh, whereas a participative okay uh, practice uh, um, employee involvement and they share information with the employees and they consult okay their employees in decision making and finally, uh, achievement oriented, okay, uh, they challenge, challenge, okay, the employees and they put high expectation okay, uh, to the employees. However, okay, they trust, okay, their employees. Eh? Uh, so as a result, okay, uh, achievement oriented, okay, um, is the one that will produce, okay, uh, high performance. Eh? And next is uh, theory Z, okay, theory Z. Okay, Kyori Zak is uh, developed by an American economics and management uh, professor William Ochi. Um, and um, uh, it's implemented okay, in uh, Japanese uh, management okay, during the Asian economic boom of the uh, 1980s. Uh, this theory okay, focuses on uh, uh, ensuring okay, that uh, the employees are loyal and uh, uh, they are very concerned of the well-being okay, of their employees um, and they uh, share this okay, through decision making. So decision making is shared okay, together with their employees. Eh? Uh, and also okay, curiosity, okay, um, ensure that um, they provide stable employment, training and job rotation. So in order to ensure that their employees are loyal and uh, employees are okay, very good, so they have to provide this okay, to their employees, uh, stable employment, training, and uh, job rotation. Uh, so as a result, it's, everything is hard yeah? uh, in terms of motivation, productivity, uh, employee moral, and satisfaction. Okay, next is uh, charismatic leadership. Charismatic leadership okay, is uh, developed. Uh, uh, by uh, German socialist uh, Max Weber in 1922. So this uh, charismatic leader 
Okay, they provide the clear vision and uh, uh, this kind of leadership is reactive right? because they concern more on inspiring others and encouraging, okay, uh, the subordinates to be the best by informing uh, their job performance level, okay. So it means that, okay, this charismatic leader, okay, they give it back, okay, to their uh, subordinates uh, about their performance. Uh. And they also compare a new set of values uh, through words and actions and uh, also they set examples, okay, for example, cost files, okay, so uh, we have already completed our uh, audit, okay, so I think, okay, some uh, recommendation, okay, like me, I have to complete, okay, my cost files, so as, but then, okay, as a leader, okay, we have to ensure that you uh, be a model, okay, of uh, your subordinates, okay, in terms of you need to, uh, uh, get ready, okay, with your cost file. You cannot just command and give order to your staff, okay, to get ready with your cost file, but then you are the one, okay, at the end of the day, or you are the one who did not, okay, complete your cost file. And the auditor will, will, will okay, uh, will um, find this, okay, that, uh, uh, that uh, the, the, the leader is actually, okay, is the one okay, that uh, uh, giving the department, okay, uh, and see. So we do not want this, eh? so we have to set uh, examples okay, for your staff. Eh? And okay, uh, can you make it either okay, uh, uh, sponsored on uh, reward oriented and uh, as a result, okay, um, can you make it okay, provides an environment full of energy and positive uh, reinforcement and also uh, they build uh, self-confidence okay, for the uh, subordinates. Okay, now we come to exercise three. Okay, can you name an example of disruptive charismatic leader? Can you name an example of positive charismatic leader? Okay, I give you uh, 10 minutes okay, to do this. And I will come back to you in 10 minutes. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm back. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, any volunteers? Hello. Ah, yeah. Hello. Hello. Can, Can I? Me? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I think for me the first one, the example yeah. of negative charismatic leadership, can be Adolf Hitler, as uh, Associate Professor Dr. Visha already mentioned. I think that is the good example because he was loved by the uh, uh, country's uh, people, but actually he was doing so many bad things. And the second one can be the current, the current leader for the country, Angela Merkel. So I think she is really uh, fantastic. And for Malaysian um, example, I can refer to Tun Mahathir. I think he's also very good. He's also very charismatic leader. Thank you. Okay, very good, uh, Dr. Simon. Yes, very good. Yeah, you got the answers correct, especially for disruptive <laughs> charismatic leader. Okay, right. Uh, it's uh, Adolf Hitler. Whereas, okay, for the positive or charismatic leader, okay, there's no right or wrong answers. Uh, uh, because we have uh, so many, eh? we have so many, uh, lots of eh? uh, positive eh? charismatic leader nowadays. Eh? All right, so we next uh, we go to okay uh, to the next slide eh? um, on uh, transformational okay leadership. Eh? All right, so what do you mean by transformational leadership? Okay, uh, so this is a kind of uh, uh, leadership style, okay, which is also effective, okay, whereby the transformational leader, okay, they inspire followers okay, to transform, okay, beyond expectation. So this is uh, the uh, difference, okay, between um, charismatic, okay, leadership with uh, transformational leadership. Right? Uh, charismatic leadership, okay, does not, um, does not, uh, uh, does not uh, focus, okay, on um, on uh, ensuring that uh, that uh, yeah, 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 staff 
and also subordinate, okay, uh, to transform uh, in making a new transformation. Eh? So this kind of uh, leadership, okay, is proactive. Eh? So it's opposite to charismatic. Charismatic is more reactive, eh? reacting okay, to the situation. But uh, transformational leadership, okay, is more concerned on encouraging okay, their staff, okay, to think critically and to seek new ways uh, to approach uh, jobs. Eh? However, uh, they don't okay, criticize people okay, for their mistakes in public. Uh, even though okay, they want their staff okay, to look for new things, uh, uh, to think out of the box, uh, but uh, they do not um, uh, scold okay, people uh, for uh, making mistakes uh, for their mistakes. Uh, and uh, transformational leaders also practice uh, employee empowerment. Okay, they empower their people and they reward okay, their people for creativity. Okay, they reward the staff for uh, creativity. And they foster team uh, teamwork spirit and commitment. And uh, transformation leadership also, okay, uh, they lead okay, by example. Okay, uh, so as a result of this, um, there are so many advantages okay, of being a transformer, trans, transformer, transformational uh, leader, uh, whereby okay the leader okay will promote intellectual development and situation, and also uh, this kind of leader will uh, build up confidence, spirit, and enthusiasm okay among the uh, their staff okay, and uh, they also promote on achieving collective well-being and achieving. Uh, goals. Okay, last one is ethical leadership. Okay, ethical leader uh, follow rules and regulation. They follow rules and regulation. Okay, even though uh, they cannot uh, achieve, okay, achieve the object, uh, the financial objectives. Uh, also, and also, uh, if the achievement okay, is not uh, beneficial, okay, for their staff, okay, but still, okay, they follow, okay, the rules and regulation. So they are very firm, okay, with their stand of being ethical. And they are fair, just and equal, okay, in their decision making. Uh, they practice no nepotism, no echonism, no chronism, and no double standard, no favoritism whatsoever. They are accountable, responsible, okay, in their mistakes, in the incapability, in their incapability to do it right. Uh, they are transparent, okay, whereby they explain about uh, injustice or righteousness. Uh, they are honest and trustworthy, whereby they keep okay, their words and promises. And they are open, okay. They practice open communication, okay, they are participative. Okay, okay to critics, failures and suggestions. Uh, they practice respect. Because they never blame uh, people for their mistakes and they treat everyone in equal manner, in the same manner. And they are good examples. And they report for ethical behavior. Uh, this is important okay, because they want to promote uh, and they want to encourage similar traits. Uh, uh, so uh, there are many advantages okay, of being an uh, ethical leader, okay, whereby okay, leaders, ethical leaders okay, can help uh, invest, investors uh, feel that the organization is good, trustworthy, and customers are loyal. And good press is likely to come okay, when there are ethical leaders in an organization. Partners and vendors okay, will feel the same, okay, that they can, uh, they can trust and work well with uh, this kind of organization, with uh, uh, ethical organization. Uh, 
Okay, next, uh, exercise four. Okay, exercise four. Okay, reflect on two, two, three, decision. Okay, we have made that did not work out well. Okay, then reflect on your leadership slide. Okay, think about the actual situation and remember how you perform. How could you have done okay, differently? Okay, so I give you five minutes, okay? To do this exercise, okay, only five minutes. Okay, I'm back. All right, okay, so who wants to cry to answer this question? Okay, uh, Muhammad Farhan. Uh, Nur Hisham. Uh, Muhammad Khairul, Nurul Asnida, Mozafis Hanafia, uh, Maharan, Zul Khairi, Zurina, Aida Wati, Mustamam. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm calling your first name. Okay, Dr. Azhar. Uh, Dr. Farida. Dr. Paul. So, me. Uh, Dr. Kisnet. Uh, Dr. Marsha. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Sawal uh, Shah. Syaril, uh, Dr. Muhammad Azadin, eh? Dr. Muhammad Rafi'i, Dr. Muhammad Farhan, uh, Dr. Muhammad Khairi, uh, Dr. Muhammad Khairul, Dr. Muhammad Zubir, Dr. Muhammad Fazril, Dr. Muhammad Haris. Okay, anybody wants to try? Okay, Risha here. Can I try? Okay, sure. Eh, sure, sure. I kasihan nanti macam tak ada interaksi ya. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm a very uh laser spare kind of a leadership uh, yes. style. I have where I always um empower the people below me or you know even my own colleagues, and this thing has brought more pain than pleasure to me in a lot of my projects. So nowadays I'm very careful with who I have in my team because I'm not the kukubasi, I'm not the autocratic kind and I don't feel good being the autocratic kind because it's not in me. So like decisions I make is like, okay, we're going to come up with a book or with a journal. So can everybody do it by this time? And you know, we are all adults, we are all academics, you know, and even the support staff, they all have at least SPM or diploma education. So in our, in my mind, it's like, I'm not going to go after you day in, day out to find out what you're doing, you know, that kind of thing. So when I do that, it's like people take me for granted. So uh, I don't know when it comes to things that I could have done differently is nowadays I make sure there's a working agreement. So if you do not do it, that means at least it's written there and you could have come back to me to to get opinion, to tell what are your issues. So nowadays I'm a bit more, not kukubasi, but a firm so that I don't like, uh, you know, in Malay we say makan hati. I, I, don't, I don't burn myself up because of my uh, very laser sphere of uh, leadership. So I'm also kind of transforming. I think I think I will take myself as transforming. I won't take myself as charismatic, but I'm very ethical. If there are things that you didn't didn't do and you lie, uh, that makes me very very angry. If you didn't do and you tell me the truth, that's fine. But not to lie and you know usually when they tell one lie, it becomes another lie and another lie. So 
that's my style. But I think I need to be more firm from now on. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, good, Dr. Yeah, yeah, I think, okay, uh, you have a uh, transforming, okay, from a uh, laser pair to uh, transformational uh, kind of leadership and uh, ethical uh, leadership. Yeah. Uh, good, eh? because uh, you have uh, adopted um, effective, eh? uh, effective uh, leadership styles, eh? such as uh, transformational and also uh, ethical eh? leadership style. Yeah, that's good. Eh? To be sure. Very good. Yeah. Uh, uh, anybody else? Okay, let's hear from uh, Teku Norharhana Nadira. Uh, Hasniza uh, Zaman Huri. Uh, Dr. Song Si Loy. Dr. Suzana Arif, Dr. Najiha, Dr. Hasniza, uh, Dr. Tang Sui Siong, Dr. Yong Chen Chen, Dr. Azlina Abdul Aziz, uh, Dr. Siti Nor uh, Adlin Nadia, Dr. Lee. Okay, I think uh, because we don't have much time, okay, we go on, okay, we are our next slide. Okay, so next is about the values, okay? So what are the effective uh, values, leadership values, okay, that we, we can uh, practice eh, as a leader? Eh? Uh, so first one is motivated, okay? Um, motivated means that, okay, you need to motivate your employees and boost their moral, okay, when needed. And um, at the same time, okay, you have to keep yourself uh, motivated, okay, like what Dr. Uh, Bisha do, yeah? and you need to set an example for them to follow. And secondly is honesty, okay, honesty, okay, you need to uh, be loyal, okay, to your words, okay, because uh, honesty is uh, expected, okay, uh, from leaders, okay, in order to get trust, okay, from the followers. And integrity, okay, integrity, okay, uh, you need to refrain, okay, from making uh, fall, uh, false uh, promises, okay, or take short cut. And uh, integrity refers to the quality of having a strong moral purpose and being honest. So being uh, honest, motivated, and possess integrity okay, is important in order to be happy. And uh, you also need to be uh, sincere. Okay, sincere. And uh, you need to possess uh, self-confidence. Okay, mean that okay, you need to... Uh, sure of your competencies and leadership skills. You need to have a sense of self-assurance and self-esteem. Then uh, you need to uh, possess wisdom. Okay, wisdom is not just being intelligent, but uh, you need to apply uh, problem solving and decision making skills. Okay. And you need to be knowledgeable. Okay, and I don't think that this is a problem okay, to you. As all of you, okay, here are experts, okay, in your own field and in your own way. And you need to be creative, okay, and innovative, okay, because innovative people, okay, are always open to new ideas and discussion. Okay? They listen to everyone actively and also motivate others to think out of the box. Huh? And uh, you need to be flexible, okay, resilient and adaptable. Huh? Okay, this is because, okay, resilience leaders, okay, are capable of retaining okay, their energies level on the screen uh, and responding to disruptive changes. Uh, they also overcome severe challenges without disruptive behavior or hurting them. And resilient leaders are high performing leaders who recover from any adversity positively. They can cope with various types of problems and difficulties adjusting with individuals who belong to various categories, backgrounds and culture and they can put into operation those complicated tasks and functions in a well-organized manner. While uh, next uh, value is you need to be disciplined, systematic and ethical. Okay, self-discipline okay, means that okay, you need to have a good time. Uh, 
uh, management skill and you need to encourage a culture where your staff okay need to be disciplined eh? and you also need to be responsible and accountable okay mean that okay, you need to be answerable okay to the actions and decision okay might are made by you and by those who you lead and you need to be committed okay that is you need to be determined to achieve the set objective okay so the last thing is okay uh, we have uh, here okay some tips okay how to become effective leader right okay firstly okay you need to have high okay integrity okay this is because okay people generally okay want to work okay with leaders that they perceive as acting with integrity honesty and trustworthiness and you need to earn respect okay by giving respect okay you can only be respected by people when you respect people and uh, you need to be, uh, as you have to set an uh, example okay, for your followers. And uh, you need to compliment uh, your staff okay, whenever they do things right. And you have to ensure that everyone knows exactly what their rules are. So you cannot leave your staff in the dark. Yeah? You have to explain to them okay, what their roles are and what they are supposed to do. And you have to challenge your followers daily okay, to achieve more. Uh, meaning that you have to set your followers' expectation high. And you have to develop success from failure. Meaning that okay, you have to learn okay, from mistakes, from failure. So actually, okay, failure are not failures. Okay, Failures are actually opportunities okay, for you, for you okay, to learn and learn. Uh, to develop okay further uh, and uh, great leaders are masters of communication okay so you need to uh, be a good uh, communicator in terms of uh, uh, written and oral and uh, great leaders are great listeners okay you need to be good listeners of the staff especially okay when they face uh, problems okay in doing their work and uh, finally okay you have to create uh, fun and enjoyable okay even though it's a serious okay place uh, which focuses okay on uh, achieving okay uh, goals okay but still okay you as a leader okay you need to make it fun and enjoyable okay, for people for your staff so we come to uh, the last exercise okay it's a role play whereby okay you need to choose a situation and type of effective leader Alright, so uh, I give you uh, five minutes, okay, to think of a situation and a type of effective leader. Okay, I'll come back to you after five minutes, okay? Thank you. All right, okay. Uh, since okay, uh, some of you have another process, okay, can we um, do it now? Okay. Uh, so if you have a partner okay from uh, the same place that you're working okay you can uh, choose uh, him or her okay as your partner and then uh, choose a situation and type of effective leader okay anybody Anybody wants to try? You have a friend, okay, in the same department. Okay, maybe you can role play this so that we can see the example, okay, how to be an effective leader. Yeah, anybody? Anybody wants to try?
anybody wants to try okay uh, mr mohammad ferry assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, I, i think not really about role play because uh, <laughs> okay. yeah because a bit difficult considering uh, we don't have a proper discussion with other colleague uh, perhaps i may share uh, uh, a, a, a case at uh, international politics where we can see uh, today uh, is not the same like the time of saddam hussein saddam hussein was known as a autocratic leader even though in a democratic uh, uh, kind of uh, 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 political arrangement but uh, whether we like it or not uh, being a minority in a shia majority country such as iraq saddam hussein uh, I, i think got no other option except uh, need to be one uh, as a what authoritarian leader in order to make sure that uh, he can uh, develop the country so therefore in that kind of situation i would say uh, autocratic uh, was uh, good enough to develop iraq at that particular time uh, so what i'm going i'm trying to say here, here is that it really depends on the subject uh, of the, the leadership because we cannot simply impose uh, the type of leadership that we like but it is about based on the situation and condition of that particular leadership situation one sorry why Do, do, do you get my point? Uh, okay, okay, I got your point. Okay, so yeah. you are talking about uh, authoritarian, eh? Authoritarian, uh, autocratic, okay. eh? Autocratic oh, type of uh, leadership side. Yes, 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 uh, yes that's right. Uh, uh, so actually, um, okay, uh, opposite to uh, transformational, okay, it's uh, transactional, eh? Uh, yeah. All right, so uh, I can see, okay, the similarities uh, between uh, autocratic, okay, with uh, uh, trans... Uh, transactional type of uh, leadership eh? and um, uh, Dr. Visha just now okay, mentioned that uh, she uh, transformed okay, from being a uh, uh, laissez-faire kind of uh, leader to uh, transformational okay, leader or charismatic kind of uh, uh, leader. So in this uh, situation, okay, uh, Saddam Hussein, eh, you mentioned about Saddam Hussein, uh, so we lead uh, Saddam Hussein uh, as an example of uh, autocratic eh, uh, uh, leader. Eh? Uh, right, so um, I just uh, like to add that um, studies okay have found that uh, transactional and autocratic leader okay uh, it's not easy. It's uh, quite difficult for them okay to achieve uh, uh, to achieve uh, performance. So uh, quantitative study especially okay cannot find a okay, relation okay between uh, uh, transactional and also autocratic kind of uh, leadership with uh, performance. Either it's uh, employee performance or Positional performance, eh? but uh, uh, what you said just now is, uh, is uh, you're talking from different contexts. Eh? Uh, there's uh, politics. Eh? Uh, I'm talking from uh, higher education uh, situation context. Eh? Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Hairi, for uh, participating for sharing your views okay, with us. So I think okay uh, now okay we come. Um, up to the end okay of our session okay i would like uh, to thank you to all of you for joining and participating okay in my course okay, on effective okay, leadership styles and values okay in higher education can uh, i ask you one question doctor yeah yeah sure okay <laughs> when we talk about uh leadership in the context of higher education uh, yeah. how, how do you find the leadership of our 10th uh, vice chancellor which happened to be Tasri Gauss Jasmon. Uh, okay what, what what you can say about him? <laughs> I I tak nak mengumpat. <laughs> <laughs> no no lah not really about mengumpat here. But I think uh, he was an effective leader. Uh, he had the courage that uh, no VC before ever showed to all of us. <laughs> 
But uh, at the end of the day, I think uh, he managed to take University Malaya to a different level and he managed to prove that. Even though I think, uh, yeah, uh, he lacked in terms of human touch to many of us. But but uh, but, but how do we describe his leadership, uh, Doctor? Okay, all right. Uh, so I think, okay, uh, Hansri, okay, is a kind of uh, situational leadership style. Whereby okay, you need to <coughs> adjust okay, your style <coughs> accordingly, <coughs> according to the situation. <coughs> Remember, okay, uh, the slides that I show you, okay, on the uh, situational leadership style, <coughs> okay, on the life cycle and uh, how path, house path goal theory. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. uh, so you have to uh, adapt, okay, you have to uh, adapt your leadership style, okay, according, okay, to the situation, okay, according to the environment and also uh, to your staff, huh? All right. Uh, so yeah, I agree with you. Okay, I agree with you uh, that Tansri Gulf adjustment okay is, uh, is an effective leader because he managed okay, to lead uh, UM okay for about five years okay, uh, which is uh, longer okay to, to compare okay compared to others uh, other uh, UM VCs uh, yeah. and he has uh, introduced okay lots of uh, I can see of that. He's also a transformational uh, leader because he has made okay, so many changes, right, uh, in uh, his leadership. Um, um, but I cannot recall again <laughs> some of them. Okay, maybe you can, uh, we can uh, recall again. Okay? Can you remember, Dr. Khairi, what have uh, he uh, done okay, for you and? Uh, I, I think perhaps because he, uh, number one is about our vision. He had a very clear vision where he would like University Malaya to penetrate top 100 in the world uh, and then everybody moving towards the same direction. That is one. Uh, okay. Number number two, there was one occasion where I happened to directly involve when uh, we got issues with a Department of Indian Studies at Faculty of Arts. Okay. One minister, two deputy minister and few politicians came to see him. He managed to defend his case very well. He showed to the crowd that he submit to no one. I think I I I, I admire the courage. Lah. I admire the courage. Lah. I think in terms of even the our today's uh, ranking status, I think we still actually uh, take benefits from his uh, vision and mission. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Okay, okay thank you, Dr. Kari, for sharing. Okay, with us. Okay, an example of uh, effective leader. Okay, in higher Education, especially in the All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, doctor, 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 yeah. uh, okay. yes. Can, can I ask question, please? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. If you okay, have time. Okay. 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 Thank sure. you so much for uh -huh. the presentation today. Uh, okay. I just want to ask you because today you mentioned about leadership, leadership uh -huh. principle, and so on. Yeah. I just want to ask you what is different between management and leadership? Ah, uh, okay. Okay. This uh, the difference between management and leadership. Management okay. and leadership, ah. because what you mentioned about Minsberg management and role in 1973, so you, you use it for leadership also. So uh, I just want to know yes. what is the difference. Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dr. Simin, for the question. Okay. Actually, okay, uh, all leaders are managers, but managers are not leaders. Okay. Uh, this, is the, this is because, okay, leaders, okay, uh, they also have to manage people, so that's why okay they are doing okay the, all the uh, managing roles. Eh? Uh, okay, the one that action okay from the expert uh, uh, theory. But okay, managers are not leaders. Okay, uh, as I mentioned okay earlier that uh, in order to be leaders, okay, you need to possess those uh, qualities, uh, certain qualities, certain uh, characteristic, okay, certain um, uh, criteria. Eh? Uh, I mentioned okay, in my second or third slides, uh, right? Uh, but uh, those are uh, uh, what that I mentioned are uh, uh, taken okay from uh, uh, past studies. Uh, that past studies I found that uh, leaders that that, that uh, possess okay that kind of uh, criteria, okay, they are um, uh, there is a tendency okay they are effective. Uh, that, uh, 
uh, there is okay they are um, um, uh, they are making sure okay that they are they are, they are, they are groups or their staff okay uh, uh, attaining okay and also achieving the yeah, the goals and objectives uh, set by the organization. All right, uh, Dr. Simit. Okay, okay, thank you. So, uh, that, yeah, that that's why we we actually believe on that the leaders doing the right things and management doing the things right, right? Ah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. that's right. So uh, because uh, for the principle of leadership, you mentioned about control. So as I know, control is more for the managerial task actually because it's uh, more uh, work, uh, uh, talking about plan, organize and control the operation. So how do you uh, um, actually relate this control as the principle for leadership? Thank you. Sorry, I didn't get your answer. Uh, your question. Okay, uh, control. How as a leader you? Yes, control? because because for the principle for leadership, you mentioned one. You mentioned control, uh, but in my belief, control is. The, the, the management task because he or she has to control the operation. He has to control the due date. He has to control the uh, task, the performance of the uh, organizational members. So how do you relate it to leadership uh, aspect? Yeah, uh, leadership okay. task. Thank you. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, okay, all leaders, uh, managers, but not all managers are leaders eh? because okay, uh, leaders okay they need to possess okay those qualities okay those uh, certain qualities in order to be effective and some more okay they are only uh, called as leaders okay if, if they uh, have a, um, a certain uh, certain uh, values eh? uh, and if, if, if they are charismatic or transformational eh? so in terms of um, monitoring or controlling, okay, that is the fourth, eh? the fourth uh, principles eh? of uh, uh, leadership, okay, that the leader has to, has to demand, eh? uh, that is to ensure that uh, tasks and duties are accomplished on time. Eh? So as a leader, you have to ensure that your subordinates, okay, your staff, okay, uh, do all the tasks, uh, job duties okay, assigned okay, by you eh? on time. So we need that you have to allocate okay some time. You have to uh, mention about the deadline. Okay, I have already uh, explained this okay in the uh, effective okay leadership style okay uh, in the house part goal theory okay right uh, especially for directive huh? uh, type of uh, leadership okay uh, it tends to uh, it tends to direct okay. Type he tends to direct his uh, subordinate eh, very well okay, in terms of um, telling uh, their subordinates okay, about the standards, about the timeline, eh, about uh, the roles and duties. Eh. So uh, as a leader, okay, uh, he has to monitor uh, human and capital uh, sources and uh, use uh, wisdom, of power, uh, wisdom of power to drive employees eh, to exert uh, the maximum level of effort uh, in uh, ensuring that uh, the goals of the organization okay, will be achieved. So that's uh, the last rule of uh, a leader. Okay? So as a leader, okay, you have to do all those uh, four uh, functions, uh, plan, organize, direct, and lastly, uh, and monitor. If not, okay, uh, the organization, okay, uh, the, the, the objective, okay, the objective and goals of the organization, okay, will not be achieved. Okay, if you do not uh, monitor or control your staff. So that's the most important task, okay, as a leader to do. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Simit. All right, okay, okay thank, thank you. thank you. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Okay, thank you, uh, everybody, okay, for joining and uh, participating, okay, in this course. Okay, so I hope that you have gained, okay, some uh, knowledge and also practice, okay, throughout, okay, this course. 
so please okay fill in okay the feedback form okay for us uh, to know okay uh, what are some of the things okay that we need to improve okay in our future training okay uh, with that okay i thank you assalamualaikum and good afternoon thank you